Hi friends, this is Jessica again. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. If you've been following me on YouTube in 2017, I've mentioned to you guys that I have got rhinoplasty done. In today's video, I will be sharing with you who my doctor is, the cause of my surgery, what I liked and disliked from my surgery, and my future plans. And in part one of my video, I have mentioned to you why I decided to get a rhinoplasty and the search for the perfect doctor. Well, my doctor is an assistant in the show called Botch. He works closely with Dr. Nasa, and his name is Dr. Donald Yu. Here's a picture of him. He's located in Beverly Hills, and I'm in Fresno. So it's probably about three and a half hours drive from my place to his office. In our first initial appointment, the consultation fee is $250. If you decide that you're going to go through with him as your surgeon, that $200 will be applied towards your surgery. Now, if you decide that you're not going to go with him, then that $200, they automatically get that $200. When I first met with Dr. Yu, I had shown him my celebrity idol, which is Kate Beckinsale. She has the perfect nose structure, the perfect nose tip, the perfect side profile. I told Dr. Yu that this is the ideal nose that I would want for myself. And that way, Dr. Yu has a picture of what type of nose I want. And I do understand that it's impossible for someone else or a doctor to give you someone else's nose because of our different uh, skin structure and nose structure. I totally understand that, but I just wanted a realistic nose, and I just wanted the Caucasian nose, and I just wanted him to lift the tip of my nose. So those are some of the little expectations I expected out of the surgery. When I was young, I enjoyed play this, playing sports, which is softball. So one day while out at a game, a player accidentally hit the ball, and the ball flew straight into my nose and my nose was crooked. My nose broke. But I never realized that my nose was broke until several years ago uh, when I was looking in the mirror. And that's when I identified that my nose is crooked. So that's when I decided that I'm going to get that fixed. When I met with Dr. Yu, I told him that I didn't want any plastic to be inserted into my nose because I was afraid of intrusion and I didn't want to come and see him constantly like every five years to reinsert a new silicone or plastic into my nose so I wanted a permanent solution and I knew that he does rip harvesting from all the research that I've been looking at so the procedure that I wanted was rip harvesting so after that um, he sat me down with his assistant and they did the breakdown of uh, the cost of the surgery and because of like I said I had expected a lot from the surgery so um, the, the price of the surgery is not cheap okay it's pretty expensive there was a lot of things that I wanted from the surgery um, so um, the rhinoplasty itself for my surgery was $18,350 and I'm going to show it to you guys. So that's his name right here, and there's the price $18,350. So the breakdown of the surgery is the rhinoplasty itself was $10,000, the PDS plates was $600, the culture was $100, the operating room was $5,100, the anesthesia was $2,550. For you to book the actual operation date, there was a requirement of 50% 50 50 down. So for my surgery, I had to put $9,175 down to book the actual date. Prior to the date of the initial surgery, you are required to pay everything already so that they'll, you know, so they know that they got their payments and they'll perform the surgery on you. Now, Dr. Yu has like um, plans, but the interest is pretty high if you can't afford the actual surgery. Um, but for me, I would I pay my whole surgery off 
so um, I didn't use utilize none of the plants that they had. I would recommend you to save if you if no if no surgery is something that you want. So save the money and don't use don't utilize the service that they have because the interest is ridiculous. Well, that's the part of the surgery itself, but because, like I have mentioned to you guys, I live in Fresno, so I had to do some driving, and I met with him several times, and after the surgery for the post office visitation, too, so each time I visit him, um, I had to pump gas, there was gas associated, and then um, there's also medicines that are associated with the surgery, because, look, if you got surgery done and you can't afford the medicine, then you're going to hear the pain. You're going to feel the pain. And you want to be relaxed after the surgery. So um, get the medicine. For me, uh, some of my medicines were paid through my health insurance. And then some I had to pay out of my own pocket. And then there's also lab work, lab work that are involved. With Dr. Yu, he requires that you are cleared by your primary doctor prior to the surgery. So he has a list of requirements that your doctor is supposed to check through and make sure that you know, you're good, your body could physically endure the surgery itself and you will recover smoothly from the surgery. And um, he also requires that you do a chest x-ray because after the surgery, your lungs are constantly at work, making sure that you are, could breathe. So um, those are some of the few requirements that Dr. Yu requires from you. And um, now I would like to share with you what I like from my notes from the surgery that I got from Dr. Yu. Um, I, I like the tip that he gave me. Um, it's the tip that I wanted. Um, he he didn't cut my a large. I, I asked him to cut my a large, but he said that uh, my a large, the wings of my nose were not that big, so they didn't flare out. So they were perfect. So he didn't cut them. I mean, they weren't perfect, but they were the ideal size or the ideal shape. So it didn't require for it to be reshaping. And then um, <coughs> one of the things that I don't dis that I dislike from my nose is. Well, I already have a projected nose. So I told Dr. Yu prior to the surgery that I would much perform, have him start the rib harvesting right here to form the bridge of the nose. But Dr. Yu insisted that the forming must start up here. And because of that, when looking at the side profile of me, I do not have a smooth transition that separates my forehead from my from my nose structure. So I don't have a dip, but if you're looking straight face to face, the bridge, the projecting nose itself looks really great. It looks beautiful. But like I say, I don't have that dip here and I'm missing that dip. So I look very awkward. I don't have that natural humanistic uh, facial feature anymore. Um, that's one of the biggest concerns that I have stressed several times to him that I don't like the fact that I don't have that natural transition. Um, and Dr. Yu has said that it's my Asian skin. It's too thick and it's because I frown too much. Those were his reasons. Honestly, I don't believe that it's my Asian skin or it's because I frown too much because I, prior to the surgery, I have the transition, the dip from the forehead that separates the forehead from the actual nose bridge itself. So I show him my previous old picture of what my profile used to look like and then compare to after the surgery profile. And I was telling him that it's not because of that. It's not because of my Asian skin, but he's not admitting to his faults. And he's, um, he, he has injected um, Botox right here. And he said that that will help the frowning of my eyebrows when I talk. However, even though he has injected that, it, it doesn't help. And he says that um, the only way to stop it is for me to um, 
to, to constantly come and get Botox. And I told him that I'm not going to come and get Botox constantly because this was some. I told him I wanted a permanent solution. I don't want to come and see you all the time. And I don't really like to get Botox injection. He, or he also suggested that I should get fillers here in my forehead and that way it will form the transition here. But that's something that I don't want to do too. So he's not willing to uh, redo the surgery again because he, he's, he's not admitting that it was his mistake for forming the rhinoplasty, um, the rib harvesting too high up here. And um, he did also mention that if I wanted him to redo it, it would cost again. It wouldn't be like he wouldn't do it for free. He would cost, he would have to charge me. So I don't want to pay again because like I said, it cost me a lot of money to do the surgery and I just wanted a permanent solution. But he's saying that if I want to redo it, then it's going to cost me about 10 to 15 grand again. So that's something that I'm not happy about. Um, I am looking for another doctor that can fix this mistake. Um, I'm hoping on finding a doctor that can do this with, within this year or maybe next year because I'm not happy. I'm very de depressed. I don't like myself. I don't like to take side profile picture because of not having that natural transition from the forehead to the nose. I look very funny and very awkward. So I'm waiting for, I'm looking for a doctor that can give me the, um, you know, can perform that expectation for me and give me a transition. And not only that, but I also dislike the fact that I feel like my nose bridge is a little bit too wide. It's not uh, narrow. It's it's too wide. It's, I need it to be a little bit slimmer and that way it looks more like a female nose bridge instead of like a ma male nose bridge. Sometimes I just feel like my nose is, the bridge is still way too wide. And when I take pictures with uh, other female, I realize my nose is like bigger than everybody else's nose. So those are the two things that I don't like about my nose. Okay. Well, that's about it, and if you guys 